Because mm -hmm. one has no beginning, he always was, but one of them is the beginning and the end. You know? So that's letting you know that, that they too different. Because every, the whole time Yahweh Shah was walking this earth, who was he praying to? He was telling these people that my father is greater than I. Yep. So what he's saying, myself is greater than me? Yep. It don't make sense. That's what they, that's that bullshit they teach you in there, you know? And when, hey, when he died on the cross, he called out to the father, man. That's right. Uh, yeah. You know? He said, why hast thou forsaken me? He didn't say, why did I forsake myself? You know? Don't make sense. Go ahead, brother. He was just the physical aspect of the father that came on the earth. Because he made the same. He, he said, well, if you have seen the... If, uh, Thomas asked him, uh, what does the father look like? He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the father. Right. He was the word manifested. Yep. Go ahead, brother. That's it on that? Almost three six. Okay, that's it. Go ahead, brother. This is Amos chapter 3, verse 6. Uh -huh. It says, Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? So he asked him the question, Shall a trumpet be blown in the city? In the ancient world, when we blew the trumpet, it was different reasons why we blew the trumpet. It could be because the new moon was coming in, the Sabbath. It means because uh, armies was coming in to besiege us. It was different reasons why we would sound the horn. But read that again. It says, This is Amos chapter 3, verse 6. It says, Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, mm -hmm. and the people not be afraid. Right, so once you hear that trumpet say you're going along with your day and all of a sudden you hear that, you're going to be nervous like, oh shit, is we getting attacked? You know what I'm saying? So it says, shall a trumpet be blown and shall you not be afraid? Go ahead. It says, shall there be evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? Shall it be evil and the Lord have not done it? It's telling you because the Lord did it. The Lord controlled everything. And um, if a brother can find that in, in 2 Kings, when it says, I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Hey, can I get a... Uh, no, of course you can, brother. Step up. The Lord is balanced. The Lord is all good. He's all pure. But at the same time... Uh, this is the... Uh, the scripture says the unjust, the unjust balance is an abomination to the Lord. That's right. So the Lord deals with total balance, man. Like you said, you can have the yin without the yang, the good without the evil, you know? And the, hot, the hot without the cold. Yep. You know, I'm gonna push that. And Sirach, it says he made all things double. There's a double to everything the Lord made. So yep. when he made a righteous, he also made a wicked. You know, because we 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 won't appreciate the righteousness unless we went through the wickedness first. Because, right. because the Lord gave it all to us at the start. What we do? The scripture, the scripture, yeah, let that madness pass. But the, uh, the scripture says that Jeshurun waxed back and kicked. So when the Lord gave us everything we wanted, we got prideful and rebelled against him. So now, man, we got to suffer this wickedness. We got to know how it is to be fucking poor and ratchet and on his bottom in order to appreciate everything he was trying to give us in the beginning. Can I grab a precept real quick? Go ahead, brother. This is Job um, 2 and 10. I'm going to start from that. Hold on. But then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thou integrity? She said, curse God and that, and because Job was catching hell. She was like, curse God and that. This is what Job said to her. But he said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speak of. What shall receive good at the hand of God? It shall not, it shall not re receive evil? Yep. See? <laughs> Yep. So, goes, no, go ahead, so you, you're going to receive good and evil from the Lord, man. You know? Yep. Can I get some? Yeah, 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 this brother has some. Okay. Real fast. Go ahead. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 4. The Lord have made all things for himself, oh, yeah. yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. He made the wicked for the day of evil, man. The scripture says there is uh, there is vessels of uh, vessels that fit it for, uh, to be honored, and there is vessels of dishonor. You know? The scripture also says that there are vessels of wrath that's fitted for destruction, you know? So they was made to be destroyed, you know? Go ahead with yours, brother. Hey, i say something too. Uh, you gotta look at God like, like, like as a movie. Like you got the director, he's the director of the movie. He's just, the Lord is calling the shots. And in the movie, like say you got a good guy and a bad guy in the movie. He gonna be the good guy, he gonna be the bad guy. But the Lord is, he's the director of, of, of all, man. Rather it's good, rather it's evil, you know? This is uh, Romans chapter 9, verse 14. It says, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? Start up. Uh, Start at um, 13. Start at 9. All right. 
This is Romans chapter 9, verse 9. We're talking about uh, Jacob and Esau. How Jacob is the, uh, the righteous, how Esau is the wicked. So we're going to explain it. Okay. For this is the word of promise. Mm -hmm. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. Yep. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by her father Isaac. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. For the children being not yet born. So Isaac, Isaac and Rebekah had Jacob and Esau when you read the Genesis, right? Go ahead. Yeah. It says, for the children being not yet born. So so Jacob and Esau was in the womb before they was born. Matter of fact, let's go to the uh, get Genesis 25. Get Genesis 25. Let's 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 go through the rundown. Go ahead, brother. It says, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. So before these children was born, neither one of them did good or evil, right? Go ahead. It says that the purpose of the Most High, according to election, might stand. So the so His will can be made, because when we read, when we go, because we gonna read it, the Scripture says that the elder shall serve the younger. The Lord already had it set up that the first that was come out would serve the second one that came out. Go ahead, brother. It says not of works, but of Him that calleth. See, but not of works, but of the Most High that calleth. So He calls the shots, right? Go ahead. It says it was said unto her. The elder shall serve the younger. Mm -hmm. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Right, and he just quoted the Old Testament. So just letting you know, the New Testament requotes the Old Testament all through. So it's all valid. How the church tell you that oh, the Old Testament done away with, done away with and all that, that's right. garbage. Because you know what? No, if the Old Testament was done away with, well, you wouldn't have sin. That's right. Because how, how do you know how to sin? through the law. Yep. The scripture tell you transgression of the law is sin. Yep. And how do you find out what the law is? You go to what? Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Numbers, yep. you know? Yep. Verse 14, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? Right, so Paul asked him the question. So before the children did any good and evil, the Lord had already set up who he wanted to choose. So is, is that unrighteous with the Most High? Right? Go ahead. It says, the Most High forbid. God forbid. Read. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Yep. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And it's, right. And, and, and as simple as that. You buy, I don't know if you have children, but you can buy your child, you buy your child a Batman and a, uh, and a, uh, and a, and a, and a, and a uh, Joker toy. If he make Batman the bad guy and Joker the good guy, that's his toys. He, whoever, who, who he wants to make the good guy and the bad guy and what he want to play it out is however he wants to play it out. That's how the most I did it. Uh, how do I, or who am I in relation to, I guess I said God. When I read in Genesis, the nephew were the children of God. Mm -hmm. He found the daughters of men in charge. Do you know who the nephew were? Giants, from my understanding of what I've read. Mm -hmm. Now, so, in relation, I'm not a child of God. Nope. That's a false statement. You are a child of God. Get uh, Psalms 82 and 6. And then, let me ask you this question. Would Michael Jordan be considered a giant today? Okay. Stand as well. I mean, would he be considered yeah. a giant? How about Jay-Z? Eminem? So when you go back to Genesis, when it says that uh, these are men of renown, they were giants in those days, talking about men of renown is talking about status wise people knew who they there, were there were literal giants back then but they were the heathens mm -hmm. when it speaks about in genesis the, the the sons of god seen the daughters of men that was us looking at these heathen women mm -hmm. and went to go down and pop yeah. them and the sons that we had out of them because they were israelites because the man carried the seed became mighty men men of renown you know like all them uh uh, uh them 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 pagan tales that you hear about Hercules and shit and all that shit and Zeus and shit. That's all niggas. That was all real niggas, mighty niggas that walked around back then that people worshipped as gods because they was they was mighty in strength. The same way today, you know, people it, worship Michael Jordan. The same way today. The same way today. Uh, Ecclesiastes one and nine. Yeah, it seven, wasn't nothing it wasn't new actual, under the sun. Like, you know, you know, them which it was. Man was taller back then. All men was taller. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't no like how you got today. You got man five feet. No damn five feet man back then. You know, but as far as they trying to like you know like the fairy tale Jack and the Beanstalk and all that, wasn't no damn man that damn tall man. You know, but men were taller. 
man did get up to, you know, 10 feet, 9 feet, you know. Mainly mainly those Philistines. You know, when you read about King David when he went against Goliath. And the Canaanites. Which those was, the, like, have you ever seen the, uh, the hieroglyphs of them damn Egyptians? Them Egyptians was tall as hell. And you and you see them, they grabbing the Israelites by their braids and stuff. Them Egyptians, they was known for their stature, man. You know? Yeah, read that. This is Psalm 82, verse 6. Uh -huh. It said, I have said, ye are gods. This is the Lord speaking to us, Israel as a whole. He said what? And all of you are children of the Most High. Read it again. But this is Psalm 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are gods. So the Lord said that we gods. Go ahead. And all of you are children of the Most High. And we're all children of the Most High because when we go back to this Genesis, we're going to read the scripture says, Two nations shall be separated from my womb, and one people shall be stronger than the other. Who dominates everything? Who dominates basketball and football, baseball, soccer, boxing, UFC? Because we're a better people. So it says we are gods because it, 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 the Lord instilled in us something special. Somebody get Deuteronomy 7 and 6. It says, uh, this is Psalm 82, verse 7. But ye shall die like men. But you shall do what? But ye shall die like men. See, but we shall oh, die yeah. like men. We're not regular men. It says we shall die like men. Go ahead. And fall like one of the princes. Right. Because of our transgression, because we fucked up, because we failed. You know? Bearing children. No, not the bearing the children part. The bearing, the, the bearing, because we can deal with the other heathens. The thing is, is that them being a snare unto you and serving their gods. Right. You know? That, that, that's what, uh, that was Solomon's biggest uh, thing. It wasn't all the wives that he had, or the concubines, because he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. It's when he started following their gods, it's when the Lord got mad at him. Yep. He could, he could, hey, he could have had a, 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 that whole thousand, as long as he'd have been following Yahweh in the process, he'd have been straight. But he started following their gods. He started putting up little fucking uh, 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 altars and sh all this other kind of shit for him. And that's what made him go to fuck hey, off. I got, I got a precept real quick, bro. Go ahead, Al. Uh, getting, dealing with the, uh, the uh, what's that, the Nephilim? He said uh -huh. they, 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 were, they was men of renown. Mm -hmm. this, this, this number 16 and 2. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, Man of renown. See? So, so when you when you read stuff like that, then in Genesis where it's talking about giants, it's not talking about giants, it's talking about men that had statue they was known. Yeah, popular man. Okay. Yeah. But like I said, it's understanding that too, because certain heathens were big as fuck. Yeah. Like Og. Things. Og was bigger than a motherfucker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Goliath, he Goliath. was bigger than a motherfucker. Right. Yeah. Yeah, them, they, them, they, it was, it was oh, literal giants back then. Right. But in that verse, it was talking about us. It was talking about us as in our reputation, as in our status. Like I said, like I said, if, if you get a motherfucker, i give you a perfect example. Abraham. When, when Abraham, when they took Lot, Abraham got after him. Okay, he went out the line. Abraham took 300 of his, his trained servants. He had trained his own servants. He went out to five kings. Understand what I'm saying? So, so now, you take 300 motherfuckers and you going out to five kings. Don't kings have armies? You take 300 motherfuckers and you bring everything back. Yeah, fuck that shit. Got my shit back. You know what I'm saying? Everybody like, hold on. Him and 300, 300 motherfuckers that he trained? Oh shit! Don't fuck with him. Can somebody get Jude. <laughs> get Jude the sixth verse. Baba Kusha. This is Jude verse six, and the angels which kept not their first estate, uh -huh. but left their own habitation. Uh -huh. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And that's talking about us. Those angels that kept out that first estate is talking about us. And it says reserved unto chains unto darkness, talking about this flesh. We're inside this, this body. So this is um, Genesis 6 and 4. This, this is the scripture that you're talking about. It says, there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown, right? So you look up that word, 
in the uh, in the Hebrew giants because we go back we go back to the original text of what it was written in. It was written in Hebrew. Now that's the Hebrew word napa napayal napayal, right? Which the word napal means to fall, to lie, be cast down, to fall. So when you speak of so when you hear somebody speaking of fallen ones, the fallen ones in the church they tell you was Lucifer and his angels. That's false. The fallen ones are us. We are the fallen ones. Because we fall, we fail from our status, we fail from a grace that we had. The Lord set us up as rulers of the planet. When we came down into the daughters of men and got to with them, that's when we fell off our habitation where we go. The habitation or our dwelling place is destructive, is this knowledge. So once they came and dealt dealing with them strange women. Like it says in First Edges yeah, that uh, many have erred and have ran out their wits because of women. You know, that's like that, that was that, that was before we got the name Israel put on. That's right. All right. Basically, we was the, the sons of Adam. You know, yeah, sons of Adam. Then later on down that bloodline, it, it, you know, we became Israel. You know, that bloodline stayed pure. We became what the princes of power. All right. Because it's three points. It's three different uh, uh, forms of men on this planet. There's the Son of God, which are the sons of God. Yes, we are, the Israelites. They're sons of men, and they're sons of the wicked. Who do you think are sons of the wicked? So the sons of men is all the mother nations. So it's three forms of people on the planet, you know? Now, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna hold much question. No, it's all no, good. No, it's good, bro. Another thing to understand, I think it's okay. That's what they teach you. That ain't what it says. They, they ain't nowhere in the Bible, Let's man. Let's get it. What's that? Genesis, um... When he said, curse be king? Yeah. It was early on, right? Yeah. Seven. Yeah, I want to say it's like eight or something like that. Yeah, eight. Yep, it's nine. It's nine. Get um, start at Genesis nine, and twenty-five. Twenty-two. This is Genesis chapter nine. Start at nineteen. Chapter nine, verse nineteen. Mm -hmm. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. Mm -hmm. So everybody on this planet right now comes out of one of these three sons. Shem, Ham, or Jack. Right? Go ahead. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. That's it? No, I was waiting for that to pass. He says, and he said, Blessed be Yahweh the power of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. The Most High shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years, and all the days of Noah were 950 years. All right, years that's cool. But they, go ahead, brother. This is basically uh, the Canaanites right here, Hamites. You know, this is this is their people, and this is our people. You can see the difference. Our people, you know what I'm saying? It's a different great. zeal. Mm -hmm. Their people, you know what I'm saying? They 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 do weird shit. You don't. <laughs> they eat fish and tomato paste, bro. That's like a national dish out there. We wouldn't dare put two two things like that together unless we got some spaghetti and some fucking uh, perch. You know, <laughs> fried. They eat fish oh, and man, man, bro. The curse that was put on Canaan was us taking the land. Because Canaan dwelt in that land first. Then once we came out of Egypt, the Lord told us to do what? Go slaughter their ass and to take that land. And they became a servant. So that's the curse that was put on Canaan, you know? And I'm gonna let you read this definition right here of Ham. 
because because we just said that um the Bible just said that all the people must be populated out of those three sons. So let's see let's let, let's see what uh what Esau himself put together that he tells on himself on. 